Good morning, EMS people. Like Lucidi will always say, but I see not this morning. And a warm welcome to you guys. I can see you are quite early up and chatting already, but a good morning to everyone. Grade 8 today, a little bit of a different thing that we're going to have. Okay. Um, <laughs> Lucidi, hello, EMS people. Right there, you've got it now, hey? All right. So listen, guys, what we're going to do today is a little bit different. Um, from last week up to now, we have only done accounting, accounting, and accounting. Um, so for today's lesson, we're going to look at the economics part of the EMS. So you will see the topic is going to be markets. Um, it's not going to be a very long lesson, but there are some theory things that you need to know and understand. So basically for today, the PowerPoint that you're going to have, it's just going to be learning work, uh, mostly like definitions or descriptions that you need to go and study. All right, economics or business for EMS. Okay. So let's see and let's start with that. First of all, like I said, the topic is about markets. And you will see there, I've put a picture there of a market. Um, a market is not only if you think of a place or somebody that is standing on the street corner selling things. A business, like a supermarket, for instance, is also a market, okay? So it's just a market you can see from different ways. And when we go into the descriptions now, you will see what I'm talking about here. Right, and there you got the definition of markets. So a market is a place where people who buy and people who sell, exchange goods and services in economic transactions. Okay, so basically a market is a place where you can buy and sell some items, either it's items, goods, or it can be services, and then they put it in an economic transaction. Now, what is the difference between goods and services market and a factor market? Right, a goods market or a service market all the place where goods and services are exchanged in economic transactions. So that means, for instance, if you think of a supermarket, if you think of, let's say, ShopRite. ShopRite is an example then of a good market because he is selling goods, products, items, all right? If you think of um, a hairdresser, that is a service business, so that will actually also be part of a goods market at the end of the day. So it doesn't matter if it is products, goods, or services, that is going to fall under a goods market. While a factor market is the market where people buy and sell the factors of production factors. Remember yesterday and the rest of today's lesson as well, we're going to look at production factors. That was that last slide show of yesterday. And that was um, where I've told you that the factors of production is going to be land, entrepreneurship, capital, and labor. So it is those four factors that are used in the factor market. So on this slide show, what is important? First of all, what is the definition of a market? A place where people who buy and people who sell exchange goods and services in economic transactions. And then what is the difference? You need to note between a goods market and a factor market. And a goods market, remember that is like your shop right or where any business where there's a service involved. So all the place where goods and services are exchanged in economic transactions. While your factor market is the market where people buy and sell the factors of production. Right, sorry. Now we're going to look at the difference between the labor market and the financial market. Okay, remember the previous slide show was the difference between the goods market and the factor market. This slide show is going to be the difference between the a labor market and the financial market. So at the end of the day, we're actually talking about four markets. Okay, 
Michael said on the previous slide, if I can just quickly go back there, you will remember it was the goods market and the factor market. And on this slide show, we're going to look at the labor market and the financial market. Right, labor market, the labor needed to sell your completed, for instance, car to you. So it is a finished product. So labor market is basically all the people that is going to be involved to complete a product. So you're going to sell that finished product at the end of the day. Um, if you think of, of, let's say, not even a car, let's say it is um, a table, for instance, a okay, kind furniture. So it's all the people that was busy working to make that table that is going to fall under labor market. Then financial market, markets where people and companies trade financial assets such as stocks and bonds. Okay, so financial market again has basically to do with money at the end of the day with the financial assets. They give you examples there's such as stocks and bonds. That is thing that you more will concentrate on because it's quite difficult, but this is things that you will more concentrate on when you're getting a little bit older and when you're going to be more like in grade 11 and 12. All right, so this slide show, remember basically we said there's four markets. The previous one was the goods market and the factor market. And on this slide show, we look at the labor market and the financial market. Just again, the labor market, it's when the labor that you need to sell a completed item, a finished product, while the financial market is where people and companies trade financial assets. The picture that you see there in front of you, I don't know if you know this, um, you will see it's the same, the JSE, um, that is in Johannesburg. The JSE is basically a company where you can um, have some shares and you've trade in some shares and stocks and all those things. So it's a very big, big kind of company where they work with the financial things of our um, land. Okay, so before we're going to get, because this is actually a new topic now. So remember the previous topic was now about markets. So you need to remember what is a market and basically the four different markets that we have talked about, you need to know the difference between them. Then yesterday, the last slide that you was, uh, have noticed, I've mentioned the four production uh, factors and that is what we're going to look at today. We're going to take those four factors and then um, we're going to talk about those four factors. Okay, Celia said is asking, please go back. I hope you mean the previous slide show. So I quickly will go back for a few seconds there if you want to check something. Instead, it just indicate to me if you are okay. Okay, the city. Okay, there she goes. Done. Okay, great. So we can continue now. Right, so getting back to the production factors. So remember, people, there are four production factors that is going to be land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. And we're going to take these four factors now individually and going to look more at the description of each one. And then you will see we will also look at the compensation of each one. This is very important. So definitely, I can tell you now, a question in an exam will be, mention the four production factors and what is the compensation of each of these four factors. So right. But before we get into them individually, it, overall it is saying the production factors is the factors of production are used in the production process to, to produce goods and services. So um, you need all these factors in the production process to produce something to get a final product at the end of the day. You will remember again yesterday, if we think it was about that chicken licking uh, picture, right? So, um, Basically, it was the chicken that you need, the raw chicken that you need, okay, and then it was produced into something 
doesn't matter if you just have cooked it or whatever you have done to it, okay, to get a final product, and that is the chicken and the chips that they sell at Chicken Licken. Then again, I've mentioned the four production factors there. You will just see, um, I always said land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. But a nice word that they normally use for land is natural resources. So just take note, either you can say land or you can say natural resources there. Right. And now we're going to move to the first one. That is going to be your natural resources. And you will see I've given you some examples there, like land, water, air, minerals, and plants. And then remember, I said with each of these four production factors, you need to know the compensation and the compensation of natural resources or of land will be rent. Okay, so again, remember what is the four production factors? We're taking the first one that is going to be natural resources. Um, you must basically explain to me or give me examples of natural resources like land, water, air, minerals, plants. And then you need to know the compensation of each of these uh, production factors. And for natural resources, it is going to be rent. Right. Remember this, because when we're done through the slideshows, I'm quickly going to ask you three or four questions just out of my head. And then you must see if you can remember this. Okay. If we go to the next one, labor. Right. What is important of labor? Labor, you know, it's the people that is involved to um, um, make the product, to get the final product at the end of the day. But what is important is there are three types of labor. Okay, if you check there, you get skilled labor, you get half skilled labor, and then unskilled labor. And you need to know the difference between these three labors with an example with each one. So right, what is skilled labor? This is persons that is having proper training at a university or a college. So this is for people that have studied after school and they've got actually the very nice professional jobs, like for instance, attorneys, doctors, accountants, so it's all the people that is having a very high, let's say intelligence um, and that have studied after school. Okay, so that's your skilled workers or your skilled labor. Whole skilled labor, then only half training has been done in a specific field. And for example, there is like your administrative workers, waiters, vehicle drivers, etc. Wait, what do I mean with administrative workers? That is usually those people that is sitting in an office doing some administrative work. Um, you all know when I will say, when we talk about the call center people, okay, so let's say you need to phone to multi-choice, then um, a lady will answer or a guy will answer the phone on the other side, and that person is going to handle all the phone calls for the day, so that is basically a call center, so they have got some training in that particular field, okay, so they are of skilled labor. Then unskilled labor is where there's basically no training involved. So you don't know anything about this job, but you're just going to start doing this job on your own. And that is, for example, like your municipal workers. All right. And then what is the compensation for labor? It doesn't matter if it's skilled, half skilled or unskilled. And that is going to be wages and salaries. Okay, so either they're going to get a monthly salary all wages is normally on a weekly basis that they're going to get. Right, so just again about labor. Remember, you need to identify between the three different types of labor. That is skilled labor, half skilled and unskilled labor. Skilled labor is when people have proper training at a university or a college. Your half skilled labor, then they only got half training in a specific field. And unskilled labor is there was no training involved and at least no one example with each one. And then the compensation for labor is wages and salaries. Right, so look at that slideshow. Remember, I'm going to ask the question. 
Okay, um, Lucina is asking what is compensation? That is basically what do they get back for doing it? So if I'm going to work now, I'm working for you guys, right? I'm giving school. So at the end of the month, I need something back. And what do I get back? I get a salary back. Okay. Um, so the same with when uh, the previous one was the natural resources where land is involved. So you are basically giving your building or your land for somebody to use. And that person is paying them a monthly a rent. Do you hear this, the compensation? They basically uh, pay a rent to you for using it. Okay. Right, going to the next one is then capital. Okay, there's not much to say about capital. That's you know by now already, money, money, money. So they say their capital is money and equipment needed in the production process. So right, so it's not just money. It can be like any type of assets like equipment or even vehicles or even buildings that has something that has a value. And then you need to know there are two types of capital. All right, you just need to mention them and you can either own or borrowed capital. Own capital means that you, let's say you have a lot of money and you use that own money of you to put into a business. Borrowed capital can either be that you're going to borrow the money with the bank or you can borrow the money of, with a family member to use to start your business. And then the payment on that, the compensation, is going to be interest. Again, you can think for yourself, if you have a bank account with the bank, what did compensation do you get every month for having a bank account with the bank? They are giving you some interest on that bank account. So, right, so the third production factor is capital, right? What is capital? Basically money and equipment that you need in the production process. Remember, there are two types of capital, either own or borrowed capital, and then the compensation for capital is interest. Right, the fourth factor is going to be entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is the ideas and the actions of entrepreneurs. You can see that picture of the lady there, thinking, thinking, thinking of an idea how she is going to start her business and then the compensation on that will be for entrepreneurship is going to be profit because what is entrepreneurship you need to come up with a very good idea to start your own business with the idea to make some money to make a profit at the end of the day so right so again with entrepreneurship is the ideas and the actions of entrepreneurs and basically, you can say the payment for that you're going to get is going to be the profit that you're going to make in the business. Right. So let's quickly, I'm just going to move back for today. Remember, okay, first we talked about markets. Remember, you need to know what is the definition of a market. And you need to know the difference between basically four markets. The goods market the factor market, the labor market, and the financial market. Then we, very important, this one that you're going to see now, the production factors. You need to mention the four production factors. You need to give examples of each one or ex give explanation about it. And then also what the compensation of each one is going to be. And the first one we said was, your natural resources, like your land, water, air, minerals, and plants. And remember, the compensation is rent. Then the next one is labor, right? There you need to identify between the three different labors, skilled labor, whole skilled labor, and unskilled labor. And with an example with each one. And then the compensation there is wages and salaries. Right, capital, there we said it is, that is the third production factor, that is money and equipment needed in the production process. You need to identify between owned and borrowed capital, and your compensation there is going to be 
interest. And then the fourth production factor is entrepreneurship. What is that? That is the ideas and the actions of entrepreneurs and the compensation for that is going to be profit. Right, now you must listen. Let me just quickly open my chat box again so I can see your answers. Right, here comes the first question. Let's see who is going to be very quick on this one. And the first question is, um, what compensation is there for labor? Now it's all about the person who is typing the fastest, right? What is the compensation? There you go. There we've got our first person, Chetza. Well done, wages and salaries. Right, here comes the next question. Um, what is the production factor where money and equipment is needed in the production process? So what is that production factor? What do we call that production factor? Oh gosh, you are very quick on it. Yes, but well done to the others as well. That is capital. Then let's see. What market is it going to be, um, for instance, shop right where goods and products is going to be involved? What type of market is that going to be? Remember, you get something like a Okay, there you go. Well done. Goods market is going to be the answer. Right. What is the compensation for entrepreneurship? Compensation for entrepreneurship? <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing there, Chitza, because I can see you're trying to type very easily and you've made a spelling mistake there. <laughs> so, but yes, people, well done. It's profit. And let's see. Another question, um, who can give me a little bit a description to say what is skilled labor? So just in short type there for me, what is skilled labor? Okay, give me, yeah, okay. Right, good, Lucidia. I will take your answer there. Um, she was saying proper training. So, yes, of course, we all know labor is people that are going to work in the production process, but it's people that is having proper training that have studied at a university or a college. Right, and uh, let's take the final one. Um, what is the compensation for natural resources? Well done, the city again. The answer there is rent. Right, that was just for fun, people, but I can see you quite understand it. So, very, very well done on that one. Okay, so again, let me just explain to you so you can understand what's going on. So, remember, as I said from last week, we were just concentrating on the accounting part, all right. Um, but there are some, oh, it's very small lessons that you're going to have. Um, during the accounting parts, that is more about the economics or the business parts of the subject, like today, all right? So normally that is going to be very short lessons. That is only study work that you need to know. There's nothing really to understand. Then tomorrow, we are going to continue with accounting again. Um, our topic is going to be the accounting equation. Now I know some of you might tell me, but this is actually work that was supposed to be done in term two. So maybe some of you have already done it, but this is very important, the accounting equation. And sometimes people is normally struggling with it because it's not always so easy, okay? So I thought that it will be good. Let us revise on the accounting equation. 
Okay, so that is what we will basically concentrate on the rest of the week. And then you guys will remember, I've mentioned something yesterday about informal assessment. I will tell you later in the week more about it. Okay, but definitely you can concentrate um, on the, in the meantime on the power slides that we have done from last week up till the end of this week then. Um, and that is also why I want to go through the accounting equation again to revise it, because definitely that will be forming part of your informal assessment. Okay, but as I say, as we go along, then I will give you some more information regarding that too. Right, basically that's only the only thing we're going to do for today. You have worked very well and good so far this week. I don't know if there's any questions. I will wait and see in the chat box if you have anything that you can ask. It can be anything about today's work, about yesterday's work, or anything that you want to know. Yes, Lucidi, we are done for today. Okay, as I said, it is a small lesson, but we need to do this between the accounting parts. Okay, um, and yeah, I don't want to start with the accounting because we're only going to start in now for a few minutes, and then we actually have to redo it then tomorrow again. All right because normally some of you guys can't remember what happened yesterday. I don't know, understand that quite well, but all right. Okay, doesn't look like if there's anything else. All right, guys, thank you very much then for today. Have a great, great day, and then I will see you tomorrow, okay? All right, goodbye.